Post-traumatic stress disorder, otherwise known as PTSD, is a widely diagnosed mental health condition. According to the Department of Veteran Affairs, roughly 8 million adults have PTSD during a given year. They go on to further state that about 7 or 8 out of every 100 people will have PTSD at some point in their lives. So how did this diagnosis of PTSD evolve? And what are the symptoms to look out for? We're going to go over all of that in today's episode, in addition to how to effectively treat PTSD. Hang on tight, yeah. we'll be right back. Welcome back everyone. For those of you new to my channel, my name is Alexa Simos, licensed therapist and certified drug and alcohol abuse counselor. And this is my channel, Real Life Psych, where we take a deep dive into mental health burdens that have a significant impact on our physical and mental health, whether we realize it or not. New episodes will be coming out every Sunday for what I like to call not so scary Sundays. You can kind of think of this as your morning pep talk you needed to get out of bed to start your day. Now, let's get back to business. PTSD was officially recognized as a diagnosable condition in the 1980s. However, history has shown that human responses to trauma have been around way before then. Ancient Greek literature, Holocaust survivors, the US Civil War, and even Shakespeare have documented the toll that trauma has had on soldiers or individuals involved, with the symptoms almost exactly the same as today's diagnostic criteria. The most popular term that was coined in 1915 during World War I was shell shock. Shell shock was actually introduced to medical literature and paved the way for treatment development and exploring people's reaction to a traumatic event in more detail. Throughout the 1970s, PTSD gained more notoriety when Vietnam veterans were experiencing psychological problems. According to research, roughly 30% of Vietnam veterans developed PTSD. I say that to say, this is just a brief overview of how consistent individuals throughout history have reacted to trauma and the importance of recognition in order to effectively treat PTSD. I encourage you, if you are interested, to do some more research on the studies that are being conducted today regarding PTSD. It's really interesting stuff on what they're doing out there. With gaining a little understanding of the history of PTSD, we can now ask ourselves, well, what exactly is it? According to the National Institute of Mental Health, PTSD is a disorder that develops when individuals have experienced a shocking, scary, or dangerous event. In some way, one has either had direct exposure to the trauma, has witnessed this trauma, has learned that a close relative or peer was exposed to a trauma, or was indirectly exposed to the trauma, like a first responder. According to the DSM-5, symptoms must last for more than one month and interfere with one's ability to function. Remember, functioning is usually looked at being able to go to school or work, engaging in existing relationships, and the ability to take care of yourself or family. In order to be diagnosed, one must have the following. And we're also going to break um, each of these categories down in a little bit. But here are like the four categories that you need to have uh, qualified for PTSD. Number one, you need to have one re-experiencing symptom, one avoidance symptom, two arousal and reactivity symptoms, and two cognition and mood symptoms. Now, re-experiencing symptoms can be presented as the following. You could have upsetting memories that are unwanted regarding the trauma, nightmares, flashbacks, emotional distress after exposure to a, tra a trauma reminder, and physical reactivity after being exposed to a trauma reminder. So you get your uh, sweaty, your heart races, you might be shaky. Avoidance of trauma-related stimuli are presented as the following. You avoid trauma-related thoughts or feelings, or avoid trauma-related reminders. So that might be the scene of where the event took place or the people that were there. Trauma-related arousal and reactivity symptoms that begin or worsen after the trauma are irritability or aggression, risky or destructive behavior, hypervigilance, heightened startle reaction, 
difficulty concentrating, and difficulty sleeping. And finally, negative thoughts or feelings that began or worsened after the trauma are presented as, fo as what follows. Um, an inability to recall key events or features of the traumatic event, overly negative thoughts and assumptions of oneself, exaggerated blame of self or others for causing the trauma, a negative affect, decreased engagement or interest in activities, feeling isolated, or having difficulty having a positive affect. Now, let's talk treatment. There are several treatment modalities that have been proven by research to have control over these symptoms. The main treatments for PTSD are psychotherapy and medication. Whether an individual needs both, psychotherapy and medication is up to the provider. This is not a one-size-fits-all type of treatment. The provider should be taking into account the trauma, the symptoms, and the person's ability to function and just how they're presenting. Despite two people being exposed to the same trauma, they will possibly have two different reactions, which warrant their own tailored treatment. Antidepressants such as Zoloft and Paxil have been used to help individuals with managing sadness, worry, and numbness. Antipsychotics have also been prescribed to individuals who present with more paranoia and severe agitation. Here are three different types of trauma-focused psychotherapy that we're gonna briefly go over. Number one is cognitive processing therapy. Number two is exposure therapy. And number three is eye movement desensitization and reprocessing, which is also known as EMDR. So first with cognitive processing, it's a therapy in which you learn skills to understand the trauma and how it changed your thoughts and feelings. This type of treatment can help you make sense of your experience and look at the event in a realistic way. Number two with exposure therapy involves exposing one to the memory of their trauma in a safe way. There are several ways this exposure could occur, such as pictures, writing, or even visiting the site of the event. This type of treatment assists with managing the emotions when triggered by this trauma and allows you to gain more control over your thoughts and feelings over time. And finally, EMDR. There is so much research on this and it's a really cool um, treatment that I believe is really effective. And it's basically when one relives the traumatic event in doses while a professional directs your eye movements. Now, due to the attention being taken away from the memory, the goal of EMDR is to lessen the impact that those memories or thoughts may have had on the person by being able to process them in this way. So basically, while you're moving your eyes while thinking of the trauma, you're ultimately distracted, allowing you to become more desensitized. That's it for today, you guys. Thank you for tuning in to this episode. This was a very brief overview of PTSD. And I encourage you to do some of your own research if you're still interested in this disorder. All in all, PTSD is a real disorder and it can have a negative impact on one's life if it goes untreated. I hope that this video was informative and provided you the resources and knowledge for you to go seek help if needed. There are also plenty of support groups online if you wanted to learn more about the disease and connect with people that also may be experiencing similar symptoms in you. Make sure to like and subscribe and tune in next week for our video next Sunday. Have a great week, you guys.